Hey everybody, happy Monday, 8.15 on Monday night. And I'm sorry I missed you guys last week. Uh, but honestly, I, I wasn't really in the right mindset, you guys. It, it's, it's not that, um, you know, that whole like live stream of your dog is not human, I had no idea it was gonna turn into what it turned into. I mean, no idea whatsoever. And obviously the backlash that I heard from that was insane, as you guys can tell by some of the comments that I got out of it. Uh, so, you know, I was not in the right mindset last Monday. And I don't want you guys to think like that completely overpowered me and knocked me down, you, you know, and made me even think about not being a trainer or anything like that. I don't want you guys to think that. What I want you guys to understand is from my perspective, it was hard, it was gonna be hard for me to focus and to actually answer your questions um, in a very insightful, um, educational way and to be able to just clear my mind. I, I just couldn't. I, and so I didn't think that it would be fair to you guys to not give you my 100% attention and to maybe give you a shortened answer than what I normally would have like on a night like tonight. So I, I just want you guys to understand that the, this obviously has nothing to do with you guys, but it was more just of, I just wasn't in the right mindset, you know? And we, we have those days, you guys, where just things aren't working correctly or, um, you know, it, it just doesn't, you're just not there. Like you're just, you just don't have the focus, that's all. And I just didn't at the time. And that's just one of those things. So that's, uh, that's, that's really what it, it boils down to. I, that's it. So, but enough with that. That's now in the past, it's history. We're gonna like completely wipe it off the table and we're gonna start fresh, okay? So. Tonight, um, you guys, there was a lot of good questions when I asked you guys what, what's been on your mind. A lot of good questions. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them. I'll try to go back through, I mean, all of them tonight. I'll try to go back through and help out a little bit, but you guys, some questions that's just really hard without knowing um, you know, how to go about answering them without getting a ton more information. And sometimes that can be more detrimental to your situation, so, um, I just want you to know that too, as a trainer. Sometimes it's really hard for me to answer a question cut and dry if uh, of, if I don't have the entire story. And then it's not fair to you or the dog because you might try something that's, you know, things get all lost in, in translation, so that's all. But, uh, so, you guys, give me, um, give me one second here, let's do this. Sorry, just doing one more thing here. So you guys, tonight, this is what I thought. I've got a few questions here. Uh, I'm hoping to get to maybe three or four questions, and then we have a little game tonight, okay? I know you guys like games, and it was a good time last time as far as the games were concerned. So, we're gonna answer a few questions, and uh, tonight's giveaway, see this shirt? No, it's not gonna be the shirt off my back. I'm not giving away my shirt. Um, but we have white shirts that are like this that we do have for sale. Uh, hey, Lynn, we do have white shirts that we have for sale in our office. I'm not asking you to buy one. I'm just saying uh, the winner of tonight's little trivia question uh, will get a shirt shipped out to them. So I think we've got them in small, medium, large, and extra large, I believe. So uh, stay tuned for that because we'll do that at the end. Do a little giveaway just like we have uh, before. And you guys, we're getting up there to like 5,000 likes on our Facebook page too. So you guys see, we need like 75 more or something. And then I will be giving away um, a day of shadowing me as well too um, once we get above 5,000. So please share this, you guys. I love helping out people and um, love what I'm doing here. So anyways, you guys, the first question here um, was from Lauren Brigham. She said she's got a one-year-old Chinook who's like over the top, uh, I think she said very social or something like that um, and you know tends to get like super 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 duper excited around dogs distance doesn't help distraction doesn't help uh, and you guys I can tell you from experience 
Um, and this isn't going to solve the question or completely directly answer the question. But I can tell you this, when I was doing this job out of my house, like down here, um, I remember I had a dog, a yellow lab come over, and I think he was probably like in the eight to 12 month range, somewhere in there. And this dog was like over the top excited, over, over the top excited. And honestly, I was still brand new at this and brand new by I mean like probably well, what, two, three years into it, four years? So I knew, you know, like just enough to get me into trouble. And I had let that dog, um, it was friendly, right? Overly friendly. And I, I had my pack of dogs and everything and, and I was gonna have them help me take care of it, you know? Uh, the dog had actually been attacked three different times at three different places. So, you know, I would, I would so do things differently with that dog if I, if I saw that dog today compared to seeing it then, but Hey, you don't know what you don't know at the time and you just make it work. So um, I let that dog in because I knew it wasn't going to hurt a flea, you know, like it wasn't going to, it wasn't a mean bone in that dog's body. And I remember letting that dog in and that dog took off like a rocket ship. I mean, a rocket ship. And when my dog Maddie uh, realized that she couldn't keep up with him <laughs> to try to correct him, uh, she, that was the first time I actually saw her like sit back and like try to focus and figure out which direction he was heading and then she would try to like head him off at the pass. And when she went to correct him a couple barks, he like rolled right over on his back and was like completely submissive, but he was like wiggling and the whole thing and other dogs were kind of standing over him. So I move in cause I'm like, hey, this this is not good. I this It just didn't feel right to me. And uh, then he got back up and he took off again and it just, it didn't stop at all. And I had to get him back out of there because the the whole group of dogs I had that day was just like, it just like sucked the, 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 the energy level like so high. Uh, and it was crazy. And then I realized this guy's causing fights because of his excitement level. Not because he was aggressive, but because these dogs are trying to chill him out. At least that was my interpretation. Um, because it just, I kept a very, very low key energy level. I mean, they, the dogs could play and, and horse around and, and that kind of thing. And I would throw tennis balls for them at a certain time of day, but man, that dog just changed the whole dynamic of everybody. And it was crazy out there. So, you know, I, I look back at it now to go back to what Lauren's question was, as far as, you know, what to do. I mean, distance is, Distance is going to work as far as, you know, like keeping your distance from those other dogs. But w when you're on a trail, like you don't have that ability to, to keep that distance going, you know, to where, you know, you're in one spot and the oncoming dog's coming this way. You don't have the ability to like turn around and then your hike's over and then you got to go back and maintain that distance. It's difficult. So, you know, in that situation, Lauren, I would probably suggest finding some, some professional help because I don't feel like there's a, a, a good enough answer for you, especially without me seeing what's going on. I don't feel like there's a good enough answer for you that I can give you, that I can paint you a good enough picture to say, hey, this is what I want you to do. Because sometimes that energy level is so over the top that a couple of words for me, I just, like I, I know the things that I would like to try with that dog, but like it's not fair of me to tell you how to go about it and then try to like say, hey, try to do this with or this tool or your body or whatever. Like it just doesn't, I, I have to go with my gut here and just say like, I don't feel comfortable kind of telling you what to do and what to try other than just keep your distance to start with. Uh, if you need professional help, let me know where you're located. I feel like I've got a really good network of people where at least... If I don't know somebody in your area, then I can probably find somebody that does know somebody in your area, and then I can help you out from there. So I'm sorry I couldn't be more of help, or, or of more help, but you guys, sometimes I like, I, that's where I have to draw the line and say, hey, there's just some information that it's just unsafe for me to give out to be able to put you into that position where it might actually cause more problems in the relationship that you have with your dog. And that's just not fair to either one of you. So um, that's, I wanted to give a little backstory to that too though, because that was the first thing I thought of when I read that. 
that question when it when it came down to it. So it gets it gets it gets sticky. It certainly does. But that's one of those things. Uh, Lauren, thank you. Good. I'm glad you're on. Excellent. Perfect. Yes. Message me and let me know where you are and, and we'll see if we can uh, try to find somebody for you. Okay. All right. Heather uh, Marie about why do dogs get the z -z 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 zoomies? Um, I can tell you this. I, you know, we try to rule out a lot of different things when it comes down to it, but a lot of times I've heard puppies getting the zoomies like around seven o'clock at night. Um, I can tell you that one of the things that I've heard from other trainers, um, you guys have probably heard me talk about George Cockrell, uh, a trainer that I've, I've learned some stuff from. Um, in his experience, he's been doing this for like 40 something years. He told me he had leashes older than, older than me. So he's seen a thing or two. Um, his, his, one of his theories, and I, and I think there's some validation to this along with some others as well. For younger dogs, maybe like a year or younger or whatever, it has to deal with the puppy food. Because a lot of times there's a lot more protein in puppy food than there is like in an adult dog. Um, so I, I tend to advise putting puppies on like an all life stages food. Um, there tends to be a little less protein in there. I mean, and let's face it, you guys, protein can, can sometimes be that like fuel, right? Uh, so to me, I think it could be a combination of there's just too much protein for this dog that's getting fed three times a day and they don't have the ability to burn it off. That's kind of number one. So if it's pent up, at some point there's got to be like this let loose kind of thing, right? If things just kind of building and this energy kind of just keeps building and building and building and building inside, something's got to cut loose. That's, you, you know, and in dogs, when they have that energy built up, they just run and run and run. I, I can tell you this. I remember one Christmas. I don't know how old I was. I'm thinking maybe elementary school, junior high-ish, somewhere in there. Maybe elementary school. I remember my, my parents brought home a new dog. Had the whole like red ribbon around her, you know, her neck. She was a black dog. Uh, she had been in a kennel for who knows how long. And I remember when my parents got home, they you know, brought us out to the driveway, out to the car, they opened the door, and out comes this dog. And of course, we had our snow banks, right, in Vermont, and this dog just absolutely cut loose. You could see she was so happy. She like tucked her tail and just started to run, and she'd like almost float over the, the snow banks, you know, and she dig it around. I mean, the snow is flying and then she comes up and kind of like floats over the snowbank again, back into the driveway and around us and then runs some more. And I just look at how much energy was just like pent up that something had to, had to break free. It had to. And that's that situation where they just get the zoomies. So I, you know, I always look at nutrition. We, we always have to keep that in mind, in my opinion, as far as what the dogs are getting. And then on top of that, we've got to look at what their normal day is like. Are they getting challenged mentally or physically? And is it enough? You know, I think we look at it and go, okay, do the zoomies last 10 seconds or 10 minutes? Because that's a huge gap, okay? You know, 10 minutes for zoomies is like a lifetime for dogs. And that tells me, okay, if this isn't a diet thing, we something's got to go with this dog. Like, we either have to up their their physical outlet, their mental outlet, combination of both, something along those lines. Because it's just gonna happen over and over again. And then I, I think that they will sometimes, it'll start to create like this autopilot, this pattern where you can almost like predict it and go, okay, seven o'clock, here come the zoomies. And you know what's crazy is a lot of times I hear that, especially with, with people with younger dogs, it's around that seven o'clock time that those do that the dogs get it, the, the puppies especially, get those like, it's time to roll, zoomies kind of thing. So it's, um, so that's what I would look at, Heather, is a couple different things. And I think, I mean, if you're talking about your dog, obviously we've trained her and, he, and she's much older than a puppy, um, but I would look at that if you're asking for somebody else. If it's a, if it's an age thing, if it's a diet thing, and then I would look at the physical and mental outlet that, that that dog is getting throughout the day, you know? The other thing too, you guys, it's been hot here lately. I mean, it just seems like there hasn't been a break for us in Vermont for, and by the way, if you're in like, 
the south or out west like i i get it like i i know i'm preaching to the choir here but for us it's just been like sticky hot and miserable dogs in the middle of the day are just not having it so i get it and, and maybe that's part of it where the dogs just aren't getting that outlet as much as they normally would so i'd look into that too all right um let's see teresa Moran foster was asking um why is her dog aggressive with some dogs and not others uh there are uh, to me like i feel like my brain can't catch up with the amount of answers that i could actually give you in that to answer that question i mean you look at it go and think okay do you as a person do you get along with every person that you run into or do you run into like maybe one or two people during the day that you're just kind of like eh i just don't get the right kind of vibe from this person um and then there's this whole compatibility issue that goes along with it too there's a i can't tell you guys like today i'm talking to somebody about uh they're bringing their dog into training with us and um for example like they said they you know their dog isn't doesn't get along with the dogs with like the short face like the boxers the bulldogs um the pugs anything like that and of course i i have a, like a, okay if this is what they've narrowed it down to then i have to take their word for it until i see something different um at my place so i have to i have to go with that and sometimes you hear my dog doesn't get along with dog with pointy ears uh, we've had that situation come in and then all of a sudden you see that it is a pointy eared dog issue because of now is it the physical trait or is it the whole energy vibe of that dog i don't know it you know without like sitting there and being able to inspect the situation and study it then i i, I don't know um other than hey that dog kind of reacted towards that husky or that shepherd or you know uh we've got a little key sound or something like that like I it very well could be that but I also look at like the energy level of what's going on like if if this husky is doing zero wrong like nothing other than just walking and this dog is reacting towards it then I might look at it and go okay is this is this really a pointy ear dog thing like that dog was doing nothing wrong other than walking across the room in my eyes so wow why would that dog react towards another dog like that that just doesn't Something doesn't jive there, in my opinion. So that's what I mean is there's so many different variables that goes that go along with this. Um, now, the flip side is if these are your, like your friend's dogs that you hang out with a lot, and if it's something that you wanna work on, then I would suggest you guys just going for a walk together. Like meet in a neutral place. Don't allow the dogs to get nose to nose, nose to butt. Like don't, no, like no, not even at all. We've talked about this before. Dogs don't have to go nose to nose or nose to butt to meet and, and make it a, a good interaction. It just doesn't have to happen that way. Like if you meet in a neutral area and then you just start walking together, even if you're on the opposite side of the road and you're just walking together, you can make it happen. And you turn around, you come back and then you go your separate ways again. Like that's still a good interaction for your dog. You know, dogs don't have to be like, hey, I'm gonna force you over into this dog's butt. You better go ahead and sniff it so then I know you guys can get along. Like, not, like that, that's gonna cause you all sorts of problems. Especially when we start to like force dogs into situations like that and it's not, it's not fair to them that way. So I, I look at it as, if it's something you wanna work on, start walking together. I think that's gonna create a much better bond for you for what's going on. Um, and maybe, maybe, I mean, who knows? It could be the other dog too putting off this vibe. It could be your dog putting off a, off a vibe that the other dog is going, hey, what's your problem? So you see what I mean? There's so many different variables that are going on here. And then we look at it from the aspect of what kind of body language are they giving each other? And then is the leash being, is there tension on the leash, which makes the dog this way? You know, so there's, there's a lot of things that happen that way that really make you kind of wonder like, what's really happening? You know, is it a is it a dog thing or is it something else? So, sorry, I had to get a drink. Um, you know, it's just one of those situations. So, but so you guys, I save this last question um, because it kind of hits close to home for me because I've gone through this twice. Uh, Sarah, I think it's. Sarah, I'm gonna butcher your last name because I'm not used to seeing your, your I, th I think this is your maiden name, but I'm assuming it's Lakshmi. Um, 
So your new baby is actually starting to crawl around. And we've trained Sarah's dog. And, but now the dog is a little nervous because here's this little human being that's crawling around. And I get it, you guys. I, I remember like bringing my, our kids home for the first time and our kids even hear, our, our dogs even hearing like the cries and the sounds and the noises and you know, the, the, the crib moving or the sound that it makes or changing diaper, like all that. And I remember one of Maddie, my bigger dog, just being so interested from a curiosity standpoint. She would just sit there and watch with like the softest eyes, but her ears perked right up. And you know, I totally knew I was okay with it, but it was fun to, to, to like watch her just sit back and take it all in. Um, she's definitely like a middle back of the pack kind of dog. She's not like, hey, what's going on over here and wants to get right up close. So that was cool to me to actually sit there and see her take that on and, and just be able to, to observe and, and watch, uh, which was pretty cool. Now, the flip side, when that baby starts crawling around, things, things are like way different than what they used to be. And that changes things for your dog because it's like not there's a human being and wait it's on the ground and it's moving so it can be very very different so for me what i always say is you know we can't sit there and control a i don't know nine month old or ten month old and like say hey don't crawl over here but what we can control is the dog and to me what i always wanted to create was that the dog actually has to move away not you know not us staying on our baby the whole time and like changing directions for him so i always in my world and and my dogs i obviously was more than 100 percent you know uh confident in them i created like a five foot bubble around our kids when they're crawling around it's like if the dogs got within that five foot bubble i'm moving them away now i can tell you that most of the time our my dogs did move away some dogs may not but I always felt like within five feet, if I can move that dog away, then I'm in good shape. Because if you get less than five feet, guess what? That baby wants to reach over, grab a tail, grab a foot, grab an ear. Um, and then anything soft, usually babies grab, and then they like clench. So it's much different. It's not like they know already to go over there and to pet. Now, the other side of this too is, <clears throat> I don't think we should be putting babies in the position around dogs to like, go over and pet them. Um, I, I, unless you've got happy-go-lucky like Rin Tin Tin in your house, I, I think it's different. But you guys, there's so many pictures I see of like babies or, or like small kids that are next to dogs and you could see the dogs just have this look like, oh my gosh, just get it off of me. Cause this is like, get, get this human off of me. This is not comfortable. So I, I always err on the safe side of things and create space because I feel like later on when the kids are three or four or five, then it's going to be easier to bring the dogs in and explain to your kids, hey, this is how we do this. We have to be gentle and you know just kind of set the ground rules. Funny part is now is that my, my son is actually a little more nervous of Gemma because she's a puppy and she moves quicker. Um, compared to my daughter who was here while I was doing the whole business she grew up around dogs so to her she's had a couple of times where she's like eh, I'm not so sure there's other times it's just like okay I'll take her outside you know so it's just one of those things but in the beginning man we got to keep babies safe 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 because even though that baby may walk over and grab that dog and the dog like turns and reacts and maybe just touches the skin on the baby you are never going to look at your dog the same again, ever. I've seen it, you're not. And then you're gonna think, wow, can I, I, I can't trust my dog. Well, you can certainly let a situation like that happen or you can do your due diligence and actually create space around your dog and create safety so your dog doesn't have to actually make the decision of telling this human to get off of me or don't squeeze me because that hurts and don't scratch and don't grab my foot and don't grab my tail and pull because then I'm going to react. So to me, that's where that comes into play. We, we have to play it safe. That's all there is to it. It's your child. This is, <laughs> remember I said your dog is not a human? Well, guess what? Your human is a human and your dog is a dog. So I think we have to find the appropriate ages for that kind of stuff to happen um, and to, to create that relationship. And look, I, like I, I think, 
like I used to walk my daughter in a stroller um, <clears throat> and then have a bunch of dogs connected to a carabiner to my belt. That stroller was fantastic. If any of the dogs tried to go out in front of me, took the stroller, steered a little left, guess what? Dogs actually came back next to me. So even though I didn't have any hands free or even any hands on the leashes, the stroller was out in front. I'm creating that this little human is leading, right? Leading the whole walk, this pack walk. And same thing if the dogs move down on my right, guess what? I veer over on the right, dogs move back, I veer out back in front of me and, and go again. So I kind of was using her as a, uh, whether you want to call it a barrier or a leader or correction, whatever word you want to throw at it. That's, that's how I was using that. So, um, yeah, but you guys, baby safety. If you're going through, Emily, I see here you're con, you're, you know, you're a little terrified here about what's going on. You know, you're doing four months. If you want to, Emily, just shoot me a message. Maybe let's find a time to chat on the phone. I'll tell you what I did with my kids. You guys, I'm talking from experience when it comes to this. Okay, I can, I can just tell you what I did. Um, zero instances, even zero concerns as far as any. I never had anything happen, so. I aired on the you know the side of caution just to make sure that space was created and it was just one of those things that I, I really I worked on you know I mean and you have to have that relationship with your dog if you don't have a dog that listens to you now and you you know are in that situation with a new baby you better work on that with your dog because you're gonna want to create space you're going to want a dog that listens to you around um, you know, a young baby. That's all there is to it. You gotta, you gotta safety first, not safety third at all. So anyways, all right. So I think that'll be good for tonight, except for it's time to give away a t-shirt. So here is your question of the night. First person to answer correctly wins a shirt. All I need you to do is probably just, uh, uh, send me, just, uh, message me your address, your mailing address and uh, then go from there and I'll be able to send you a shirt. So anyways, here we go. You guys ready? Yes, no, maybe so. All right. How many podcast episodes are available on my dog trainer show podcast? Here's your guess. You can go and look it up or you can take a chance, whatever you wanna do. How many podcast episodes have I put out? Da, 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 da. I can tell you that they've had almost 39,000 downloads, all my episodes put together. So I know it's crazy to think how many people have downloaded it. Uh, and again, I'm not going to tell you if you're right or wrong or too high or too low. So uh, I'm just going to tell you whether you get it correct or not. That's all there is to it. And for everybody guessing here, that means I know that you're not really listening correctly or, or, or watching. So... <laughs> And that's kind of telling me what's going on too. Because uh, I actually just put one out today. So that's even more of a hint. That's like a really big hint. So we'll see what's happening. So nobody is correct yet. Still waiting and waiting. This is where I need that Jeopardy music like in the background. Maybe I'll get like some sort of a cheesy, I'll get my old phone to play like the Jeopardy music background, like a YouTube thing going on in this while it's, while it's happening, so. <laughs> oh, this is pretty good. Pretty good. Corey Newton got it with 93. That's right. Today was the 93rd one, the episode. Um, and it was actually, it's a Talking Dogs episode. And uh, today I it was actually talking about why I'm not teaching Gemma to sit. Um, and it's pretty interesting, you guys, because I, it, it's been fun to watch her when she is sitting to know that nothing has been actually like um, put into her head like obedience wise. Like she's doing it 100% on her own, zero, uh, zero influence on my part. So, you know, it's just one of those things. So you guys, uh, another good night. Uh, hopefully I answered some of your questions is as always you guys if you can share this share my stuff um, that would be great um, and to be able to you know educate more people and let them know what's going on that would be uh, that would be fantastic so anyways you guys have a fantastic night and I will uh, catch up with you next Monday that's my plan 
And you guys, if you didn't know, I've got a uh, trainer coming out next week, Lynn Bokey. Uh, he actually piped in here earlier when we first started going. He's coming out to um, <laughs> teach me for a week, let's just say. Uh, it's going to be some pretty intense training um, that, I, <laughs> that I'm looking forward to. Uh, it's, it's very in-depth about dog psychology and man, I've been looking forward to learning more about dog psychology than you can probably ever imagine. Um, obviously, you know, Dog Whisper was uh, a huge influence of mine and all I had were the DVDs and new episodes, you know, every season and that's all I ever had to learn by. Um, and then even once I like just about, I don't want to say memorize, but you, you know, you plug in an episode and I can be like, oh yeah, this is a so-and-so dog or whatever. Um, I, I would afterwards, I would actually go back after a time, once I had all the, the DVDs, um, I would actually go back and, and fast forward the part to where Caesar first started working with the dog and I would mute it because I didn't want to be influenced by what, um, what what was being said by Caesar or by the owners or whatever. I just wanted to see the body language of the dog. It's like I wanted to be separated from everything else. Like I'd already seen the episode. I heard, you know, Caesar kind of narrating what he was doing and, and how everything was going. Um, but from there afterwards, I just wanted to like zone everything out and watch the dog and watch for those subtle changes. And that's 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 what I did to like study. And I would take that and then apply it towards the group of dogs that I had here or any dogs that I came in contact with. So I like to think that that strengthened my abilities in the beginning. And then uh, just watching it over and over again. And then, man, watching dogs is your classroom. That's all there is to it. It's why, it, that is your classroom. They are the best teachers. They're gonna tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So um, Lynn is going to be here for a week and we're gonna work five days with dogs every day and, and I can't wait to, to learn. Um, cause again, why have tunnel vision? I, you know, like it's, you can't have tunnel vision when it comes to dogs. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help dogs. That's all there is to it. So anyways, I'll be back on next Monday. Um, I may look like a deer in headlights next Monday after day one with Lynn because it's going to probably be insane. Um, but that's good. I always, I always like those times where you have to, you have to take like 10 steps back and go like, holy cow and then be able to take 12 forward. And I know it's usually like one step forward and two steps back, but I feel like we're gonna make that much of a, of a change over, over time. Um, and then even after he leaves, like you've gotta put things into effect and you've gotta, you've gotta work them for a little while. So anyways, uh, you guys, that's it for tonight. Corey, uh, shoot me your uh, address and shirt size and we will, uh, Yes, Lynn. No, actually, no, don't take it easy on me. No, 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 no. You can't take it easy on me because then I'm not, I'm, I'm going to not, I'm going to feel like I'm getting jipped. <laughs> no, I don't ever, I don't want anybody to ever take it easy on me, especially somebody that's teaching me. Like you got to hit me with it because otherwise I'm just, yeah, that's all there is to it. That's how I learn. I, I just need to know, like just black and white, tell me how it is. We'll be good to go. So anyways, you guys. I'll see you next Monday, that's for sure. You guys have a great night. See ya.